So for instance, if you have 5y uh, minus 3, so that would be one polynomial, and I'm wrapping it in parentheses just to show you that it's grouped together as a polynomial, and you're adding to that another polynomial. We'll call it 2y plus 9, right? And you want to add these guys together. So now first of all, I want to point out that this is grouped in a set of parentheses, but inside of here you just have 5y minus 3. You obviously can't really add these together because these are unlike terms. You have a y here, or 5y's, and you have a, a constant, a 3. So these are not like terms. They don't both involve y, so you really can't do anything further in here. And same thing here. You have 2y and you have plus 9. You can't really add these anymore. So the, the plus and the minus signs are there, linking them together, gluing them together. But you can't really simplify this anymore or this anymore. So you can kind of mentally drop the set of parentheses that are surrounding them. Um, ultimately, you can either mentally do that or you can, you can actually write it down that way. And so let's just show you. You could drop it and say 5y minus 3 plus 2y minus, I'm sorry, 2y plus 9. And so these two problems are effectively the same. We were able to drop the parentheses here because effectively you can't do anything further in there. Same thing as, uh, there as well. And when you drop the parentheses, it's a little bit easier to see what you need to do. We're looking and hunting around for like terms. Here we have 5y, here we have 2y. Remember, um, terms are like if they contain the same variables, right? So this is, has a y and this has a y. And they both have numbers in front, so we're able to add those numbers because they're both talking about the same variable. So we can add them. What is 5 plus 2? By the way, don't let this subtraction scare you this, or throw you off. This subtraction applies to the 3. This is a positive 5y. This is a positive 2y. So we add them together normally. 5 plus 2 is 7. So what you're going to get is 7y. Don't forget the variable has to come, come along for the ride. It's like Five jelly beans and two jelly beans, you add them together, you get seven jelly beans. So the variable comes along for the ride. Then you start looking for other like terms. Uh, you have a negative three and you have a positive nine. There, there's no variable associated with either any of those, so those are just numbers. So of course you can add them together. What is negative three plus nine? The way you handle that is by subtraction. Nine minus three is six, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value, which is nine. So it's going to be a plus sign. So the answer to this is 7y plus 6. So congratulations, you've added together um, two polynomials. This is a binomial because it has two terms. This is a binomial because it has two terms, and we just added them together. So every problem we do is going to be like this. You're going to look for like terms, and you're going to add them together, and that's all that there really is to it. So to take another example, what if we had, for instance, um, 3x plus 8, all right, and we're going to add to it, um, 2x minus 5, just like this. All right, so same sort of thing. So you can mentally drop the parentheses if you want, or you could just write it all out. And just for the first couple times, we'll write it all out. We, we're able to drop them because there's nothing to do in here. You can't add these together. They're unlike. Same thing there. So you can just kind of uh, write it all down. 3x plus 8 plus 2x minus 5. And you don't have to do that, but it sometimes makes it easier to see that you have three x's and two x's. They're both positive, so you can just add them together because they're like terms. Three plus two is five, so you get five x's. And then you look, you have eight, and you have negative five. So how do you have add eight to negative five? Or you can read it as eight minus five. Eight minus five is just simply three, so positive three. And the answer is five x plus three. All right? So it's, it's pretty simple. That's what we're going to be doing you're always going to be hunting for like terms in order to add them. What if you had, let's take something a little bit bigger, what if you had 2r minus 3x plus 5 um, plus negative r plus 3x minus 2. So again, we're grouping in parentheses just showing you that this is a trinomial, so three terms. Okay, but notice that the variable here is an r, and the variable here is an x. So these aren't even the same variable, and this, of course, has no variable. And then you have another trinomial, r, x, and then a constant. So you can drop the parentheses because there's nothing to simplify inside of here. And so sometimes it makes it a little easier, so let's do that. And what you'll have here is just 2r minus 3x plus 5. And then here you've got to be careful because you have plus, but then you have a negative r. So it's plus negative r which is going to be written down as just minus r. And then you have plus a 3x 
so it'll be plus 3x, and then you have plus a minus 2, so it's going to be written down as just minus 2. Now, you just need to be careful. You could write this as plus negative r, and you could write this as plus negative 2, but you all know when you have plus negative something, it's the same thing as subtraction. So when you read it like this, just write it as subtraction here and here. Uh, basically, the signs are coming from inside of there. So now that we have it all written down, we start, start to hunt for these um, um, like terms. So we see that we have two r's, positive 2r, and here we have negative r. Right, so how do you add those together? You can also read it as 2r minus r, or 2 minus 1. So that's just going to give you a positive 1, or positive r in this case, because you have to keep the variable. So basically, the subtraction of 2r minus r uh, just simply becomes r, or 1r. And what I like to do when you have lots and lots of terms like this is after I add things together, I'm, I put a little dot underneath it. And the dot reminds me that I've already handled those two terms. So now I can go and look at other things and look for other things that are similar. So here I have negative 3x, and here I have positive 3x. What's that going to add together to equal? Negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0. So instead of writing 0 down, I'm just going to strike through this and strike through this. And that reminds me that they they don't really, I guess, vanish into thin air. It's just that they add together to give you zero. So you don't write anything down for those. And here you have 5 minus 2, or 5 plus a negative 2 if you want to think of it that way, but it's 5 minus 2, which is going to give you a positive 3. So we'll go change the color back here and give us positive 3. So the answer is r plus 3. That's the final answer. So again, you just write everything down, look for these uh, like terms, and then go to town trying to, trying to simplify them. What if you have 2x minus 5 minus x minus 2? Now here's our first problem where we're subtracting polynomials. You see here, we were adding polynomials together in all three cases. Here we have a polynomial, a binomial in this case, and we're subtracting from it another binomial. Um, so here you do have to be careful because you have this minus sign, so it, you really do need to write everything down before you try to do the subtraction. So for instance, you're going to have 2x minus 5. We can drop those parentheses. But here you see this negative, it's really a negative 1 out here. You need to distribute it into here and distribute it into there. Remember that distributive property I told you that you'd be using it over and over again, and you will be. So this is going to be written as minus x. Let me switch back here. Minus x. And what do you think is going to happen when you distribute the negative in here? It's like negative 1 times negative 2, so you're going to get a positive 2. So when you distribute the negative in here, you get negative x distribute here. It changes it to a positive 2 because of the rules of multiplication um, in algebra. So now you start looking for like terms. You have positive 2x minus x, or you can read it as 2 minus 1 because there's an implied 1 here. 2 minus 1 is 1, and of course you still have to keep the x, so it's going to be x. And then you have negative 5 plus 2. How do you handle that? Uh, well, you subtract 5 minus 2 is 3, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value, which is negative 5. So it's going to be x minus 3, and that's the final answer. You have to be really careful when you're subtracting polynomials to distribute the negative sign in to get the correct sign so that you can add everything together. All right, so this will be our final lesson, or our final question in this uh, lesson. What if we had uh, 5 x minus 3t minus 7, and we're subtracting from that x minus 2t minus 3. All right, so now we have the same sort of thing. You have two variables, an x and a t, and then of course nothing here, and you're subtracting from it another trinomial, also with x's, t's, and a constant. So you need to really write everything down and distribute that negative in there. So you're going to have 5x minus 3t. We're just dropping the parentheses here because there's nothing else we can do inside. We can't actually add those things together. And we distribute this negative 1. That's going to make that negative x. And then when you distribute to the negative times negative, is going to give you positive 2t. And then the same thing is going to happen here. Negative times negative 3 is going to give you positive 3. So now we can start hunting for like terms. We have a 5x and we have a minus x. So this is 5 minus 1, which is going to give you 4x. And I'm going to go ahead and put a dot under this and under this to remind myself that I've handled it. And then I'm going to look over here at negative 3t plus t. Or you can read it as negative 3 plus 2. How do you handle that? You subtract them, and the sign is going to go with a larger absolute value. So it's going to be negative, well, let me change colors here. It's going to be negative 1t. So it's going to be negative 
t because 3 minus 2 is 1, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value, so you have a uh, negative sign, and the t comes from the fact that we're subtracting two t's, uh, variables that have t's there. So we've handled those two guys. Now we look for the constants, negative 7 plus 3. We've done this enough by now. You should know that that's negative 4. And we'll switch colors back to negative, make it negative 4. So the answer to this is 4x minus t minus 4. The only thing you have to be careful of is when you're subtracting these guys to distribute this in. And of course, you need to be very familiar with how to add and subtract negative and positive numbers. And that's why we spent so much time with it. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll be doing a lot more of the same thing, just giving you more practice every step of the way. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.